Hey everyone, Rob here with ICO Analyst. Uh, today I'm talking with the InsureX team. So today on the line here we have Ingemar Svensson as well as Christina Dolan. And basically just wanted to go Hi. over a few fundamental questions that we had um, about the InsureX team, about the project, about the product, and about the company. So I think to start, we'd love to just get a quick little 60 second overview, just a quick intro. Um, Ingemar, would love to start with yourself. Sure. Hi, I'm Ingmar. Um, I have a uh, technology background. I've been developing application in mission critical environments for almost two decades now, uh, primarily in uh, banking and insurance companies. Um, I've spent a lot of time learning about technology and applying it. Uh, in various environments. It's been a very uh, challenging but exciting journey. Awesome. Christina. Hi, Rob. Hey. So I'm, I would describe myself as an entrepreneur, a, uh, an engineer, a computer scientist, and uh, I've been innovating, building products and, and companies uh, along the waves of all the technology waves that come about uh, in the early days of the web was heading up technology for the first consumer websites which was you know right after I graduated from the MIT Media Lab and most recently I have been in the fintech space uh, where I've gotten involved in blockchain and so as a result of that I have a very strong understanding of sort of what is going on or what has gone on in the in the fintech markets as well as you know the benefits of a, a blockchain architecture within that in that evolution. Okay, that's awesome. Cool. Yeah, so I mean, the point of this entire video is really just to have a conversation with your team. You know, any you know p potential investors, current investors, and, and and everyone and every partner. You know, as we're moving forward here, we'd love to just learn a little bit more about what it is that your team's working on. So I, I, I guess the the first question that I always have with any company that I'm looking into is, you know, what is the fundamental problem that your team's looking to solve? Um, so in the insurance industry is um, quite challenging. They have a lot of different uh, processes that are very complicated. They deal with a lot of data and it's often very a large number of, of uh, different participants in, in, in these processes. Um, so that's one of the problems that we believe technology can help with. Um, there's also a, um, uh, an opportunity to provide an alternative marketplace where these uh, insurance institutions can transact in a much more efficient and, and streamlined way than is currently possible. Okay, that sounds awesome. Uh, and I mean, with insurance marketplaces and things like that, I mean, where, where did the actual idea come from? Anyway, like where, where did the idea behind you know, building blockchain for this insurance marketplace uh, come from? Well, we were actually working with a number of insurance companies, developing um, custom software solutions for them. Um, and we repeatedly heard about uh, them being interested in new technology um, like blockchain and a different way of, of basically doing the business. Um, so we kind of started to, to, to talk more to, to these uh, uh, various uh, insurance companies and reinsurance companies and, and that's really how, how this uh, concept came about. So all of this is really interesting. I was curious to just, you know, let the community know about sort of the team that InsureX has now, um, the team that you're looking to hire in the future. Um, because I think, you know, no matter what, in order to solve the problems that you're talking about, you need to have a qualified team. So can you just tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, I, I mean, that's one of our strengths. We already have an established development team uh, with a background in fintech and 
as you might know, the fintech requires a particular mindset and a particular skill set. Um, we deal with regulatory challenges, security challenges, performance challenges on a daily basis. So I think that background will definitely help us to uh, deliver a, a very, very good uh, platform. Uh, and we also have a very good, very, uh, uh, good culture and uh, uh, attitude in terms of um, getting stuff done. Uh, I always encourage uh, developers and, and, and uh, team members to go and see clients um, oh, and understand the requirements and then come back and implement something great and then go back and show that. So um, that's one of the things that we plan to continue and grow from and we really have a good foundation. That's really cool. So you're having developers sort of be almost client facing then is what you're saying. And sort of like, you know, what, whatever their problem is at that time, you know, sort of developing around that and helping solve that. That's really cool. Yeah, I put a lot of value in, in uh, developers, testers, analysts to understand the business firsthand. It would have been uh, and uh, that, that really helps when you want to develop uh, these kind of applications where uh, you have to deal with, with, with the challenges I, I mentioned previously. Okay, cool. Uh, and, and then what about in the future? Um, and when I say future, I guess, you know, even, even taking us to, I don't know, like, like January 2018, um, you know, after you've already successfully done, done a raise and you've built some teams and you've built some, some you know, you've, you've gained some more clients. I was curious what that team will look like at that point. So I think as we grow the team, it's important to uh, uh, introduce more organization and, and methodology uh, to uh, make sure you, you can grow in a, in a controlled way. Yeah. Um, we're also looking at bringing in um, in-house business expertise. Uh, uh, so we really have that direct interaction with people who know the uh, low-level details of, of these uh, complicated processes and can help us uh, develop the, the functionality um, that, that we need. Awesome. That's really cool to know. Um, and then so like when you were building this, you know, I mean, Christina, why don't we, I mean, I would love to learn a little bit more about, you know, why you think, you know, blockchain technology would actually end up solving, you know, half the problems that Ingmar is sort of mentioning here. What's interesting, so if you look at, you know, what's happening in the capital markets and you look at the amount of data that's available and you look at, um, you know, how blockchain works, I mean, it's an ideal technology that provides both, tra you know, transparency, uh, it's an immutable platform that enables trust, and so it brings, it's a platform that enables uh, partners to come together, share data in a way that enables them to transact a lot more efficiently and also be able to provide better customer service. In addition to that, there's this economic layer, which is an important piece of that, that enables partners to come together on a peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, through a peer-to-peer -peer mechanism uh, in a way that enables them to uh, transact uh, economically and it also helps create the network effect that's cool um so just <laughs> i mean can you it's interesting how you mentioned that with the network effect can you uh can you talk a little bit more about that so like what it, what do you mean by the network effect i'm just trying to well it's interesting so it's interesting that you, you hear a lot about uh bitcoin and bitcoin had a, a network effect because of the economic layer and also it, it created a, a mechanism by which you could cross boundaries and be able to efficiently transact financially, right? Um, what's kind of interesting about the Ethereum uh, platform and, and blockchain from an enterprise perspective is that um, through this economically, we can offer those same efficiencies with an additional um, transparency and trust in this peer-to-peer -peer sort of fashion. And so this, this, um, this efficiency that Bitcoin has been able to create that's enabled it to spread is something that Ethereum is now able to provide at the enterprise level. And that's where this economic layer plays a big, big role, especially when you have a lot of organizations that are transacting and sharing data. 
Okay. It's very interesting actually because uh, early on in in, in our uh, uh, thought process here, um, we actually had this as a, a, a central um, question uh, around how we could make it easy for participants on this platform to transact, and uh, you know we, we were thinking of all kinds of different mechanisms. Uh, one would be kind of the straightforward credit card payment uh, type idea. We were thinking about having some form of uh, point system uh, similar to, you know, air miles and so on. And it kind of evolved independent of the, um, uh, the, the, the more official definition of tokens and, and, and so on. And uh, I think we, we got to a point where, you know, we, it, it actually made a lot of sense for us to tokenize the platform in the way we did it. Uh, and, but it was very, very much a natural progress towards that. Um, we actually had a, a real, uh, a, a real um, uh, need to make uh, the transactions easy to, to deal with on a platform. That's really cool. Um, you know, yourself and Christina had mentioned, you know, Ethereum and, you know, I, I'm always curious um, out of the, you know, you can you can build this technology on sort of a basis of, you know, whether it's the Bitcoin blockchain, the, the, the Ethereum blockchain, you know, there's Stratus, there's a million platforms out there. Um, probably not a million, but either way, I'm just curious why Ethereum um, in particular right now? Well, we obviously looked at pretty much all of them, and we we did our prototyping in in most. Right. Uh, but we really came to love Ethereum because of its uh, ecosystem of tools, and uh, we we feel very comfortable with Solidity, for example, because of its similarities to to JavaScript. Uh, we found a lot of the um, uh, the, the whole build pro uh, uh, mechanisms with Truffle and so on. Um, it all just felt right, um, and um, um, it's proven when we pushed it as well um, in terms of uh, complex business functionality or, or, or you know, complex data. That is, it's actually working out pretty well. Um, we still have a long way to go in terms of um, battle testing this on the on the public blockchain or even on a consortium setup with you know, hundreds of clients. Right. But I think in terms of the uh, environment that it provides, it's it's a really nice, really nice development environment. You know, it's always curious. I mean, look, your your team is unlike a lot of other sort of the, the traditional, I mean, I was always impressed by your team because of the fact that you're actually established and you've done so much in the marketplace before, both in FinTech, insurance, and then, you know, very clearly, you know, creating and building companies. I'm curious why your team decided to go the ICO route versus the, you know, traditional VC private equity route. Well, for us, as I said, there is a natural um, uh, uh, link to tokens. And we needed a way for uh, the whole platform to actually be able to take transaction fees, for example. So it, 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 it worked very well in that respect. And um, we also had a, a, an alternative in terms of funding, which was to organically grow this uh, out of our um, existing projects that we were delivering to insurance companies and, and others. Um, what we're looking for now, it's, it's, it's uh, a significant acceleration so we can shorten the time to market uh, uh, because we have opportunities now with real clients. They are waiting for our software, our platform to be delivered. They're very excited. And we want to take that opportunity. Um, uh, so, so this is one of the reasons why we're, uh, we're uh, doing the ICO. Cool. I guess I also wanted to add, because we talked about the economic layer above blockchain, and that's a very significant piece of this. But keep in mind, um, when people have talked about the efficiencies of Bitcoin for global payments um, at the enterprise level, you know, this is a very critical component of this architecture because this is a 
a global platform. And so as a result of that, that efficiency is very important. Also going back to the data piece, I mean, data has become a very, very big part of financial markets. And so when you start adding partners to a platform and talking about um, you know, data, having this economic layer is definitely um, a, a sort of a, a motivator and a sort of a lubricant for these transactions to be able to move quickly. And so it, it's a very significant part of the architecture. It's really cool. Um, so on top, so on top of what you're mentioning there, Christina, um, you know, In Ingemar had also mentioned, you know, putting this in front of clients. Um, you know, I'm curious, you know, where, do, where does your team see yourselves, um, you know, Q1 of 2018? Um, you know, do you, do, do the two of you expect that you'll have, you know, a, a handful of clients sort of signed up or, you know, where, do, where does your team sort of see yourself at that point? Yeah, that's definitely the goal here. Uh, the goal. Um, we already have, a, uh, uh, you know, clients who are, um, you know, willing to come on board and uh, help us um, to shape the flat platform here. And um, we have, uh, in particular, one client who is already signed on uh, and oh, okay. sort of waiting for us to to uh, to. Uh, on board them, if you like. So, um, in, in, uh, just a couple of weeks, we're going in there to show our MVP for them, uh, to them. And, um, um, I think during the, the Q3 and Q4 this year, it's all going to be about making sure that we can provide a, a, a solution which works for, um, a wide range of, 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 uh, clients and in parallel, seek out suitable uh, early uh, adapters, for, uh, sorry, adopters of this who, who would uh, uh, help us uh, go to market basically on a, on a, on a, on a wide scale. Okay. So uh, we hope that the trials will start during uh, the end of this year and uh, we should be ready uh, to, um, to grow this out at the beginning of next year. Awesome. I mean, we've gotten a lot of great uh, feedback from uh, people in the industry at very senior levels uh, that have reached out to us and want to have some sort of a role in the early stages of this company. Well, that's pretty exciting, <laughs> as you probably know. Um, that's amazing. Um, I won't pry too much because <laughs> all that sounds sounds great, and I know that you're just in the in the you know sort of starting phase here. Um, and of course, you know, once, once, once the once all the funding is in, that's when the you know when the real when the real work work starts and getting that team ready and and, and building from there. Um, so you know, I think from from my end, um, these are all the questions that I had. Um, I can't thank the two of you enough for your time today. Um, what I'll be doing is I'll be posting this online and as more questions come up um, if people have questions just write them in the in the comments section on the YouTube channel and you know we'll see if the team can, can answer those questions for you but otherwise um, you know guys thank you so much for your time thank you very much for all the appreciate you. It. you got it appreciate it thank you all right cheers everyone